Hello everybody. I am Leah wilson Fellis. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm at Yoga Studio Satya and this is going to be a beginner class, but you'll probably notice that it's going to be more like an all levels class because I know most of you and I know that you're not beginners. <laughs> I know that we can push ourselves beyond that, that level of just stretching and start to flow a little bit. And so we're working with an elemental series right now. I'm on the last class of the elements. And so if you'd like to check that out, you can go to YouTube and type my name in. If you need that name, I can write it down for you after class. And um, there is earth and water and fire and air. And today we're going to be working with space. And so this is the last, the fifth element. And so um, in... In our yoga, in Sanskrit, it's known as akasa or akasha, and that means space or ether. And so today we're going to be doing this mudra, this hand position, that is specifically for akasha or space, the ethers. And it's really simple. All you do is touch the very tip of your thumb to the very tip of your middle finger. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the mudra. Let that rest on your lap. You could rest um, with the hands kind of cupped together. You could rest with your hands up if you'd like. It's totally up to you. And so it's just a really nice, gentle, almost tapping or just touching of those two fingers, middle finger to the tip of the thumb. And so in the Ayurvedic combination, this is going to be a vata, which is known as air and ether mixed together. So we're going to be finding a lot of space in our body today. We're going to start with the kumbhaka breath. The kumbhaka breath, there's a space between the breath. And so, just follow along here. Go ahead and lower your gaze. Maybe you find a spot on the floor. Maybe you completely close your eyes. And we're going to take a deep breath in. Through your belly, through your chest, your lungs fill completely. And then you're going to pause at the top, space at the top. And then exhale through the chest, through the lungs, through the belly, and then pause, space at the bottom. Breathing in, pause at the top, and breathing out, pause at the bottom. Continue breathing in as deeply as you need, pausing at the top, and then exhaling. Letting all the air be released out of you and pausing at the bottom. Continue breathing your own pace, doing the kumbhaka breath with the pause, the space at the top and the space at the bottom of the breath. With ether space, we sense with listening. We hear the space that our body encompasses and what our body asks for to be able to live optimally. Ether is space and creates a synergy of all the elements combined. They exist together in space. When we think of space above and outside of our earthly atmosphere, there's only expanse. There's only stillness and this oneness. All the other elements have to combine and react to create energy, but otherwise it's just expanse, stillness. Space is stillness. Space is simply existing. Space is that which contains or holds. Ether, space, it's the element that connects us to spirit, intuition, other realms, dimensions, planes. Space is light, it's empty, it's hosting, it's encompassing, it's abstract, elusive, and somewhat of a presence beyond identification. So as we work through our practice today, ask yourself, what is your relationship with stillness? For some of us, it's very difficult. If you cannot find stillness in your body, you won't find it in your mind. 
So notice now the space between your teeth as you breathe and soften your jaw and open the inner ear. The space between your joints. The space between your breaths. Can you listen? Richard Freeman says that yoga begins with listening. So let's take a couple extra breaths with a space in between the in and the out breath. And we'll listen internally to what it is that our body requires today. Last breath here together, holding at the top for just a moment and holding at the bottom. Open your hands wide and let's start moving with that breath, breathing in to lift the arms out and up overhead and exhaling to float those hands down towards your lap, towards your seat, towards the floor. And let's do it two more times together, just moving at your own pace. So don't worry so much about how I'm moving, just try to move with your breath. Nice, so we're getting that air element really flowing here as we float through the air, raking the air with our fingers out in front of us. Let's go out to the side too. So open your arms out wide, three out to the side. So if you're sitting directly next to someone, you might have to scoot forward or backward on your mat so that you don't brush their armpits. <laughs> nice, to so move in whichever fashion is comfortable. Remember, if you have any restrictions in your joints, to honor those restrictions, press those boundaries a little bit, but not feeling pain. Nice job. We'll drop down through those fingertips here, and we're going to start to ground a little bit so we can move through all of our elements today and up into space. So if your legs are uncomfortable like this, sit however you're comfortable. I'm just going to switch my seat a little bit so that I'm crossed the other way. And I am sitting on a block, so I'm going to remove that out of my way and sit a little bit more on the ground. So let's bring our hands onto the knees, so even if your legs are straight, the hands will be on the knees. It's fine. And we're gonna try to wave our spine, cat and cow. So with an inhale, we'll start with cow. So drop that belly forward towards your seat, towards the floor, and then we're gonna round back and try to have, be, have, have that like mad cat back. And then we'll go back and forth a couple times, inhaling forward and exhaling backward. So we've got to just wave that spine, and you can feel how your seat is grounding into the floor here, rolling back towards the tailbone, rolling forward towards the pelvic bone. Feels pretty good to get that spine moving and the seat grounding. Let's go a little bit side to side, too, here. So we'll just lean from side to side. For some, it's more of like a tilt. For some, it's more of a slide. So you'll just have to find what works for your body. It looks really good, everybody. And then we're going to add both of those together. So um, we've done this almost every week of the Element series. So let's lean forward with an inhale. Choose a direction. I'm going to go to the right first this week. And then I'm going to round towards my tailbone and go out to the left. And come forward to the pelvis again. And then I'm just going to smooth it out so that if I pretend like I have a pencil on my ceiling or on my head, I'm going to draw a circle on the ceiling with my head. Nice job. Whenever you're ready, make sure to switch directions. I will usually do that as I come towards the back or the front of the circle. And don't forget to try to get that breath moving. For me, it's inhaling to the right and exhaling towards the left. And it might be front is inhale for you and back is exhale. So just find that breath rhythm. Let's come on back up to center. Nice work. All right, so let's bring our legs into a crisscross with the right leg in front. I oh, know you just changed. 
so sorry. You can do your left leg first if you like. Um, just remember to switch sides. So I've got my right leg in front. Some people will stack it on top. So that's your choice. And then we'll bring our hands in front here and start to walk the hands forward. Yeah, so for some it's like, ooh, I already feel the stretch right in front of my, hand, of my legs. But some of us can really walk out in front towards the top of our mat, maybe even dropping onto the elbows. Remember not to compare yourself to me or anyone else. When you start to feel stretch in your hips, that's where you stop and just let it stretch out. Take a couple breaths. Move the air. Allow it to flow in and out. Space between the breaths, space between the teeth. Nice work. Go ahead and press back up to center, seated, and we'll stretch this front right leg out in front. And we'll give our hamstring a quick stretch. Big inhale up to the sky. And folding forward towards your right foot, towards your right ankle, your shin, or your knee. Stretching the back of your leg. Behind the knee, behind the calf. Nice job. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's known as head to knee position. So simply by bowing your forehead down towards your knee, you're gonna increase that stretch quite a bit. Try to relax the shoulders. Remember to create space between the teeth. <coughs> Come back to that kumbhaka breath <clears throat> where you inhale and hold it in at the top and then exhale and hold it out. Let's take a big inhale and come back to center. Nice work. All we're going to do is slide that foot off the outside of the mat. One hand on either side of your left foot. And we'll start to walk our hands forward. So all I did was took my foot off the edge of the mat there. So now there's space between my right leg and my left foot. And that starts to open up this inner thigh muscle. Yeah, looks good. Creating that fulcrum in the hips just by leaning forward. And if it's ever too much, you can do a dynamic breath, which would be inhaling to rise up out of the pose and exhaling to ease into the pose. So that with every exhale, bringing yourself into that discomfort for just a moment. That's the difference between your static stretch and your dynamic. Static is just holding, it can be uncomfortable, keep breathing, but that dynamic allows you to rise out of the pose and into the pose. Let's take last breath here. About six breaths as we just hold that posture. Come on back up to center. Bring that right leg in. Kick your left leg straight out. We're gonna mimic everything we just did on that right side, but on the left. So we're gonna start by bringing our right foot back into center, <clears throat> and we're gonna bring our left leg right in front. And for some of you, you're like, ah, this is my bad leg. <laughs> this is my bad hip. Well, it's still a good hip, it still does its work for you. It might just be a little tighter. So some people will also stack the left ankle on top of the right. So that's your choice. I like it to be in front. We'll walk our hands straight out in front. You can start to walk your hands out towards the top of your mat, and you just have to stop when you feel a good stretch. And that can be different for each one of us. So take a moment and start to breathe as you edge yourself into that posture. I feel the stretch in the outer left hip close to the glute. Some people will feel it in the inner thigh instead. Some people will feel it closer to their knee. So just notice where it is, how intense it is, and if you want it to be that intense. You're in charge of your stretch today. Last breath here. We'll start to press back up towards our center here. And we're just gonna kick our left leg right out in front right for you over there, and we're moving into that head to knee position or Janu Sirshasana. <coughs> Big inhale, rise up into the space above you, and we'll start to fold forward out in front of the body towards the left foot, left ankle, left knee or shin, just stretching the back of the left leg. Could be the knee, thigh, calf, low back. Let's take two more of those deep breaths. 
holding with a space between the in and the out. Great job, everybody. Start to roll back up. Take a big inhale as you come back up. And then we're going to just slide that foot out off the edge of the mat. So we want there to be space between our right foot and our left thigh. I already feel the stretch right there. So if you, want, if you just want to sit like this, that's fine. What I do is I place one hand on either side of my foot, and that will allow me to just kind of bend my elbows and I'll stop as soon as I start to feel that tug between my knee and my groin. So just feeling where it is, how intense it is. If you want it to be that intense, adjusting if need be. And remember, you have the ability to make it dynamic. So if it's very intense on the mind and the mind starts to get a little agitated, then what you might do is take an inhale and rise up out of the pose so that it's not so intense. And then with your exhale, fold a little deeper into that pose. Moving in and out of that pose consistently. So you've got options and choices to make. Keep grounded and keep flowing. Last breath. Go ahead and rise back up to center. We'll bring our left leg back to center here. Right leg will kick out. Wiggle those legs out a little bit. Maybe do some window wipers with your feet. We're gonna take a big inhale up to the sky, rising up into that space above your body and then folding forward. My belly reaches towards my thighs. That's about the extent of my forward fold. And then I just let my arms come down through that space and rest on the top of my legs. So some people are, you know, really, really going to reach forward and try to get to their toes. And if that feels good, feel free to do that. But also know that you're going to feel a good hamstring stretch, whether you reach for your toes or you reach for your ankles or your shins. It's all about the hinge in your hips. Last breath here. If you need some extra time here, feel free to stay longer. We'll start to rise back up when you're ready. Nice job. Let's start to roll those shoulders out as you come up. You might hear some crunchies in those shoulder blades. I hear, you might hear mine. <laughs> Go forward to, I like that idea. I'm gonna copy you. We're gonna bring our fingers up to our, our shoulder caps. Draw those elbows down, squeeze them forward. Big circles with the elbows here. It's just a nice way to get the chest and the shoulder blades to rotate around. Nice, both directions, make sure to do that. And then some people might alternate as well, so if you like to get moving in alternating directions, you can do that. Nice work, everyone. Now let's start to rise up and out with the arms here. Reach out like someone is pulling your arms out in either direction. We'll start to lean out to the right. Reach up with the left and over, out into space. Take a couple breaths, bringing that deep, fresh air into the lungs, grounded through the sits bones. Nice. Inhale, bring yourself up. Remember, someone's going to pull on those arms and then we'll tilt towards the left. Right hand reaches up. Maybe over, really expanding into space. Couple breaths, grounded through the feet, through the tailbone and sits bones. Inhale, back up. Nice job, everybody. Let's come to hands and knees next and our flows are gonna be what really help us to warm up. So go ahead and swing those legs around and come up to hands and knees. We'll just do a couple rounds of our cat and cow here as we come to hands and knees. Make sure to use and have any props handy that you might need. So blankets for the knees, pillows for the knees or the palms. You can switch to fists at any time if the wrists are just a little bit too, too tense today. Nice work. Do a couple dog wags too, rocking those hips and ribs from side to side, just starting to explore through the space around your body. Nice 
work. Now I imagine that inside of the belly there's like a little coal, there's a little fire in there. And every time I inhale, of course, it's going to fan that flame and I'm starting to kind of rustle those coals around in there, those little embers inside of the body. And we'll start to create some tapas or some heat inside of our body today as we start these flows. Coming back to center when you're ready. We're going to tuck those toes under. And we're going to rise up into our first downward dog of the day. So let's get this one really, really good. Push your hands into the floor. Look back at your toes. Look back at your ankles. Hinge those hips up. I pretend like there's a hook hanging down from the ceiling. And it's hooking onto my tailbone and kind of pulling me back and up. Nice work. All right, so we're going to practice this, this slide forward with our arms. So look from your toes to your hands and allow your body to slide forward over top your hands, coming into kind of plank. And then we're going to do that again, just rise back up into that downward dog. So we're going to practice that two more times. So with an inhale, roll forward to that plank like a push-up pose as best as you can. And then again, we're just going to hinge back up. So don't feel like you need to spend forever there. Last time, plank position. And then hinge it back up. Now this time, as we look towards our hands, we're going to walk towards them. Nice. You can walk your hands back towards your feet. That's the most amount of time we're going to spend on our hands today. So let your arms just kind of dangle, maybe shake your wrists out a little bit. Floppy hands, shake them around. Nice. Now let's separate our feet, bend the knees. And I try to get my belly to rest on my thighs. So I kind of feel like a gorilla. My low back is spreading and expanding. Head. Let's try to let the head go for a moment. Arms just hanging loose. Beautiful work. Big breath here. Inhale when you're ready and start to sweep those arms out. Start to slowly, slowly rise through your upper body. As I start to hinge up, my arms are going to reach out and up overhead, reaching up into space, reaching as high as I can, and then we'll bring it down into our heart center. Nice work. <clears throat> Walk your feet a bit closer together, but not so that they're touching. You want all ten toes facing straight ahead. You want hips, shoulders, and the gaze straight ahead. We're always focusing kind of alignment. So then I look down and I make sure that my toes are facing straight ahead, but then my ankles are stacked under my knees. My knees are under my hips, hips under shoulders, and ears over shoulders. So a lot of times we'll have our head kind of forward, so we'll try to bring it back. Amanda always talks about this cosmic headrest. And so we want to pull our head back onto that headrest in our car that we never use. <laughs> Inhale right here at the heart. Grounded through the feet. Exhale, hands down to the side. It's known as Tadasana, mountain position. Inhale, sweep the hands out and up. And then we're going to exhale and float forward. Straight forward, soften those knees. Again, belly on the thighs. The hands might just hover in space. You might get your fingertips down to the ground, or if you happen to have a block handy, blocks are really nice to grab onto if you're not quite at the floor. And blocks have many, many levels. Three levels. You can stack them too. So I like to use a block sometimes. I'm going to soften my knees and make sure that those feet are not touching. They're separated by about six inches. And with an inhale, I'm going to straighten just one leg. I'm going to do my right leg first, and then I'm going to exhale and bend both knees. Squat down a little bit, and then with an inhale, I'll try the left leg. Ooh, that side's tighter for me, and then I'll exhale and bend both knees. Inhale, right leg, lengthens, and we exhale and bend both knees. Inhale, left leg. Exhale when you're ready to bend. We'll do one more round here. This is just a really nice way to assess how your hamstrings are feeling today, how your legs and hips are feeling. Nice last time. 
Bending both knees and with an inhale, we'll lift halfway. That means our hands are gonna come onto the front of our shin, right under the knee or above your ankle. And we'll start to press the arms out, <coughs> press the legs towards straight and the spine towards straight. I pretend like someone's in front of me pulling on my head and someone else is behind me pulling on my hips so that my back is straightening out. Let's take that last breath and pull our belly button in towards the spine, exhaling back to the forward fold. I'm gonna bend my knees enough to get my hands to the floor and step one foot back, then the other foot back. Remember your downward facing dog that we began with. Nice work. And remember that transition we learned. Look from your toes to your hands and roll forward like you're going to do a plank, like a push-up. And then I drop down to my knees there. Untuck the toes and we'll slowly lower ourselves all the way down, thighs, belly, and chest, all the way to the floor. Squeeze those elbows back. Nice. It's not always pretty. It takes some time sometimes. We've got to allow our body to know these moves, and in order to do that, you have to practice more. So let's squeeze our elbows back, look forward. When you push a little bit onto the floor with your belly, your hand should be able to lift. That's called sphinx. You should feel it here in your back. It's activating, strengthening. If you'd like to go a bit higher, we can go into a cobra. If you're able to lengthen your arms, which I'm not able to yet, that's upward dog. Good job, Leah. We'll lower back down. Other Leah, yes. I'm not talking to myself, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> we'll tuck our toes here and lift back up to hands and knees. From there, you can either rise right up to downward dog, or you can come to plank first, and then hinge those hips up. We're learning the alignment of these moves here in our beginner practice. Now we're in downward dog, but I won't make you stay there long. Look from your toes to your hands and start to walk forward. Some will need to walk their hands back to meet their feet. Nice, we're here in a forward fold. Remember, the feet should be separated and the knees can be slightly bent. I think about belly on the thighs. With an inhale, we'll lengthen our spine out by lifting our hands up halfway. We call that the half forward fold. Let's take one more deep breath. And with an exhale, we'll release back to that forward fold. Let your head go. If your eyes are open, you might be gazing behind you between your open legs there. We'll sweep our arms out to the side, press through the feet, and slowly start to hinge upward. We don't want to do it too fast because we don't want to get dizzy. Hands will reach up into space and bring it all back down to the center. Brown through the feet, lift through the head. Things are starting to warm up in the body here, creating some tapas or some heat. And so I always have to kind of readjust back into samastiti. Samastiti means same stance. So everything is same. Toes forward, hips forward, the sight is forward. But then everything is stacked as well. Remember that cosmic headrest. We're going to do one more of those, but we're going to flow as in vinyasa style. So nice long breaths. Inhale here at the heart. Exhale, hands to the side. Inhale again, up over your head. And exhale, down, forward, fold. Notice every inhale is a lifting and inflating. Every exhale is down to the floor, grounding. Inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, forward, fold, bend those knees. Step one foot back, other foot back. We're in downward dog first. Look at your toes. Inhale here, exhale, roll forward, plank position. Inhale at the top, exhale, down to the knees, lowering your body to the floor. Inhale, heart lifts, it could be sphinx or cobra. I'm a little bit more warmed up now for an up dog. And then we'll lower back down, down to the belly. That's the safe way. Tuck your toes and rise up. It could be hands and knees first. You could rise into plank or right up into your downward dog. Take a break if you need, my friends. Child's pose is always here for you. 
Look towards your hands. Inhale, start stepping towards them. Exhale on the way. Inhale when you're there and lift halfway, flatten the back for a tabletop back. Exhale, forward fold, soften those knees. Reverse swan dive when you're ready, arms out to the side. We'll slowly, slowly, slowly rise up to the sky. Don't get dizzy on me, hands will reach up to the sky. Exhale to the heart center. Nice job. So I choose a little bit more of a flowing breath in these vinyasa style movements where some teachers will do more of like that fast breath where it's like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. So we go a little bit slower in here, it's beginner, all levels. <laughs> and so now we're going to start to add some lunges onto this. And so we've been working through this through the element series and then we'll kind of add it all together. So let's bring our hands to the heart. It's just a great way to bring our attention back to the center line and back to any intention that we may have created, any prayers that we might need to, to say back into our lives. Inhale right here. And exhale back to Tadasana, hands down to the sides of our body. Inhale up overhead. We're going to stay there and lean over towards the right. So exhaling. Inhaling up to center and exhaling over so the body, upper body is leaning towards the left. Inhaling back to center and we're going to exhale straight forward, soften those knees. So it's kind of like I'm sitting into a chair as I forward fold. Nice. Get those fingertips down onto the floor there and we're going to keep those fingertips there. It could be that you need a block, so don't hesitate to grab your block. The left foot is going to ground down and the right foot is going to slide back. Your toes can stay kind of. So we're going into an assisted warrior three. So they're going to slide back and then hover above the ground if possible. It's okay if your right foot needs to stay close to the ground. Even I am shaking in this pose. Eventually the right leg will lift up away from the ground, but your fingertips are your stability here. Let's bend our left knee, that's your standing leg, and step your right foot as far back as you can towards the back of your mat. So you're in a high lunge now. Hands walk up to the top of your left knee. Nice job. Inhale, sweep those hands all the way up. Oh my gosh, strength. Doing it. Beginners. <laughs> Inhale right here. We're going to lift through the hands and the head. Exhale, ground through the feet. Last breath. Exhale, frame that left foot and step it back to downward dog. Thank goodness. Nice work. So all we're going to do is a half vinyasa. What we learned at the beginning, look at your toes, then look at your hands and roll forward to plank. That's as far as that half vinyasa is going to go. Then we hinge back up to that downward dog. Lift your left leg all the way up into the sky. Nice. Step your left foot forward as far as you can. And then the right foot and then the left foot, right foot, left foot, all the way towards the top of your mat. Get your fingertips on your block if you need that. We're doing the other side. So now the right foot is going to ground. The left foot will slide back into space, into the air behind you, into the space behind your body, so that your left foot is somewhat lifted off the ground. It's okay if it's not very high. Nice. Your fingertips are your grounding stability. One more breath. I know it's burning. Mine is two. We'll bend our standing left, no, right leg, <laughs> and the left foot will step back as far as you can. Nice. So left foot back, right foot forward. I've got to use my block. I'm going to push up on my right knee. <clears throat> use your ground here. Use the earth to stabilize you. When you feel stable there, you might start to lift hands to the heart or even hands up into that full high lunge. Ooh, that right thigh is burning. Mine is definitely burning. <laughs> One more breath. 
Exhale and frame that right foot. Same thing. So remember, the right foot's going to step back. Downward dog. Here's our half vinyasa. We roll up to our tippy toes. Come forward into plank like you're going to do a push-up. Hinge those hips back up to your downward facing dog. Raise the right leg up into the air as high as you can. That tripod downward dog. And then we're going to step it forward as far as you can. And then the left foot. And then the right foot. Left foot. Right foot. Nice. Lift halfway. Inhale. Exhale. Forward fold. Reverse swan dive. Slow, slow, slow as you rise up. Reaching up into space. Bringing it all back to center and down into the earth. Our Shavasana is going to be sweet today. Tell you what. <laughs> hey, you ready to add this all together? <laughs> what? I promise you'll be great. Inhale right here. Exhale, hands down to the sides. Out and up to the sides and up to the sky, up into space. Slow that breath down. Move through water. Forward fold. Separate those feet if they come together like mine have. We'll lift halfway, flat in the back. And then exhale to that forward fold. All right, so let's do right foot grounded. I'm sorry, left foot grounded. Right foot's going to fly. Okay, so the right foot kicks back behind us. And then we're going to step it as far back towards the back of the mat as we can. Start to press into the left knee, the front leg, rising the upper body. Inhale, sweep out and up to the sky on either side. You can stay grounded or the hands can stay at the heart center if that works better for your flow today. Inhale and lengthen that front leg. That's your left leg. And then exhale and rebend. Stay there. Inhale. Exhale. Float forward. Nice. Step that foot back. Left foot back. So we're in downward facing dog. We're going to go through a full vinyasa. That means inhale, rolling forward to plank. Drop to your knees if need be. Lower down. Nice and slow. Thighs. Belly. Chest. Nice. Inhale to rise the heart up. Slow that breath. Exhale, floating back down. We'll tuck those toes and press back. Hands and knees. Rise those hips up. Downward dog. You got it. All right. So we're only going to do the uh, right leg here. So the right leg is going to lift up to the sky. We're going to do our best to step just the right foot forward. Just the right foot. Okay? So this is where we might have to make adjustments. So come on up to standing. All the way in that big lunge. And if that stepping forward was not as big as you would have liked, so if you're like, well, I only stepped forward a little bit, then you could take this time to step that right foot forward. And then we're going to align hips. Hands to heart or up over your head. High lunge. Got it. Inhale. Exhale. With our next inhale, we're going to straighten the leg. And exhale and rebend. Nice. Here's our balance for the day. Reach the hands forward and step hop that left foot up to meet the right. Let's march it out a little bit. Doing so good. That's it. That's it. You did good. <laughs> I'm proud of you all. All right. I, I did promise last week that we would do a fun transition from tree to warrior three to high warrior. So I don't forget these things. So let's do our left foot once again rounded into the floor. Right knee is going to come forward and then we'll turn our right knee out. So it kind of looks like this. Bring your hands maybe to the heart if that helps your center line. 
I'm always looking at a spot on the floor. Because if I look at you, then I'm like, whoa. So I might lift my right toes to start assessing, how's my balance today? If it's off, it's a new moon. Blame, blame it on that. Wrap that foot around the calf or the ankle if you want. Nice balance today. Now don't look at me because I'm going to rotate forward. Okay. Now we're going to transition to warrior three. That means we kick our right foot back. And maybe start to hinge forward. Professionals here. Bend your left knee and step that right foot back as far as you can. Whoa. Me too. Me too, girl. <laughs> Nice job. All right, so let's see how easily we can push all of our pressure into that left foot and step forward. Nice job. Other side, the right foot's going to root. The left knee tips up forward, so I'm on my tippy toe. I'm going to rotate the knee out, and I bring that heel right above my ankle bone. I can start to test that balance on that side just by lifting the foot. And if your balance is off, keep your toes grounded and stay at this level. If you want that extra challenge, you can lift it up. And we're going to start to move into a warrior three. So I'm going to start to rotate and kick my left foot out back behind. Teeter-totter forward a little bit if you're there. And try your best to step that left foot back, bending the right knee. Nice job. It's getting us ready for those harder classes. Now let's see how we can do this side. All the pressure into that right foot. We'll step the left foot forward. Nice job. It's hard. High five. Doing it. <laughs> let's rest a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, high five. <laughs> so I'm going to just do a half salutation. Big inhale up to the sky, up into space. And a big exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Big inhale, lifting halfway, flat in the back. And then back to that forward fold. I'm going to step back to my final downward dog. It's the last one. Hands and knees when you're ready. And let's come into a child's pose or a puppy pose. So child's pose is a bit deeper to the floor. So your hips would try to meet down towards your heels, shins resting, belly on the thighs as the hands reach forward. Now puppy pose is a little different in that the hips might stay more lifted in that posture, but it honors the hips and knees a bit more. So choose the option that works best for your body. Let's take a couple breaths. Perhaps the forehead rests on the floor, on stacked hands, or on a yoga block. Feel how your belly presses into your thighs every time you breathe the air in. The back body expands and then softens as you exhale back into the ground. Beautiful. We'll begin to rise up to our hands and knees so that we can transition onto our back. So if you've got some water close by, feel free to grab a little water. Feel free to use a bolster if you've got one around. Use a blanket for your head, for a blanket, for your knees, whatever you might need here. Make the space around you nice and somewhat organized, and, and then we'll start to lay back and settle into the ground. Keep your feet flat and your knees bent at first. We just have one more stretch on each leg before we completely lay into the ground and let go. So this is known as uh, figure four, thread the needle. So I'm going to take my right leg and pick it up and cross the outer right ankle or calf over top my left thigh or knee. That's the figure four. So your legs are creating that, that, that shape there. And then if you'd like more stretch in your right hip, you're not feeling much there, then you want to reach for the left thigh. The right hand is going to go through the flag of the figure four 
and the, right, the left hand will be on the outside of the left thigh. As you pull the legs closer towards your body, it will increase the stretch, so find the right level for you. And when you find that right amount of stretch in the right hip and glute and thigh, you might start to rock the legs from side to side. We'll extend our left leg so that it looks like it's stepping on the ceiling for just a moment. Flex and point your toes a couple times. Roll your ankle in both directions. And then we'll bring our left foot back to the floor, uncrossing, and doing those same steps on the other side. So the left leg will cross over the right thigh so that the left knee creates the flag of the figure four. Now keep in mind this side is definitely different, so if you feel enough stretch there already, stay there. If you need more stretch, then you'll pick up the right foot off the ground. When you find the right amount of tension and stretch for you, then start to rock the legs from side to side. Stretching the outside of the right hip, I'm sorry, the left hip and the left thigh. We'll begin to extend the right foot, the right knee, so that it looks like your foot's on stepping on the ceiling. And we'll just start to flex and point those toes and draw a couple circles with the toes on the ceiling. And you've had enough. Bringing that foot back down and uncrossing. Now if there's anything here, I like to just rock the knees like window wipers from side to side while I'm here to start to loosen up that lower back. And we'll do our best to find a couple moments of stillness here. Give yourself the break that you deserve after all of the work that you've put into today's practice. So if for you, having the feet flat and the knees bent works for you, you can knock your knees together, a bit of internal rotation. A bit more expansive posture where you will feel a stretch is the Supta Baddha Konasana, which means reclined bound angle position. And that means the feet would be bound together and the knees drop apart, kind of like butterfly wings. And gravity starts to pull those knees towards the ground. So that would be for our more active practitioner that really wants to continue stretching and working as they just lay. And then there's our traditional Shavasana, just extending those legs down, down past the ends of your yoga mat, letting the hands either rest on your belly, feeling the air as you breathe in and pause at the top of the breath, and breathe out and pause at the bottom of the breath. Perhaps it feels better to have the arms extended slightly outwards off the edges of your yoga mat with your knuckles <laughs> grounded. Bless you. Knuckles grounded, fingers curled and relaxed. So find a position that honors your body, allows you to just rest and lay feeling the head grounding, the shoulder blades resting back on the mat underneath you, the pelvis sinking down into the mat, the calves creating a gentle indention in the ground beneath you, the heels creating that same impression underneath your body into the earth. What is your relationship with stillness?
Notice the space between your teeth as your jaw softens. The space between your joints. The space that your body fills. Notice with each inhale how the belly rises up higher into the space surrounding your body. How as you exhale, soften back into the earth. awareness back to the breath and take the largest, longest, deep, deepest breath that you've taken all day. Filling your belly, filling your chest and expanding even deeper. Let's, let's uh, start to move this body by just rocking our head a little from side to side on the back of our head, on the occiput. Start to point and flex your toes, and roll your ankles, widen the fingers, make fists, and roll the wrists. And let's do our good morning stretch by reaching the hands up overhead, feet down and expanding in all directions, all out in the space around you, relaxing so that we can choose a side to roll on to, whichever side that would serve you today. I always say that the right side, if you roll to the right side, you might feel a little bit more relaxed today. If you roll to the left side, you might have some extra energy. And of course, we'll make our way up when you're ready. If you're not ready, then stay laying as long as you'd like. There's no rush in coming back up today. If you can remember the Akash Mudra, that was the tip of the middle finger to the tip of the thumb. Yoga begins with listening, and yoga ends with stillness. What is the difference? A great silent space holds all of nature in its embrace, and it also holds you. A quote by Eckhart Tolle. Remember, you are earth, ground, stable, support. Remember, you are water, life, cleanse, flow. Remember that you are fire, burn, ignite, transform. Remember that you are air, move, change connect and remember that you are space the entire universe is inside of you and you are the universe in ecstatic motion thank you thank all of the elements that ex are inside of you thank your body for being so capable so strong gaining that flexibility, gaining that strength today, 
having the ability to come and do an hour of yoga. Thank your breath for being your guide through the practice today, the energy through your life. Thank your mind for getting you here today. Thank you, thank you. I bow to each of you today. And in yoga, we say the word namaste. It means the supreme sweetness and the divine light inside of my own heart and soul honors the exact same light inside of each one of you. Namaste. Namaste. And shukriya. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are all amazing. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for tuning in at home, too. That concludes our element series. So if you want to go back through them, the videos are there.